2022 Persuasion and the Jane Austen Festival in Bath. Today's fourth episode in the Georgian Express journey through the world of Jane Austen is taking us in the direction of the city of Bath, where a large part of the story of persuasion takes place, and where the world's largest, most important Jane Austen festival takes place annually. Bath is the largest city in the English county of Somerset. It is famous for and named after its Roman baths. Come on board the Georgian Sisters Express and Lakshmi and I will take you there. As you may already know, my sister Lakshmi and I will soon be opening a unique Jane Austen webshop. While Lakshmi mainly focuses on design, product development and everything to do with the webshop itself, I like to take you on this journey and show you around the places that we are visiting or will be visiting. Today, I'm going to give you a sneak peek at some of our products and I'm going to show you where we're headed and that is to Bath. In Bath, every year around September, there is this unique, amazing and large event which is called the Jane Austen Festival. This year, Georgian sisters will be there. We will have our own market stall at the opening fair in the Guild Hall in Bath, and we can't wait to welcome you there. I'm going to give you a sneak peek at some of the products that will be for sale there for the very first time ever, so better make sure you're there. Let me give you a first idea of what you'll encounter there. There'll be these exclusive art prints, high quality art prints, with one illustration matching each of the six finished novels by Jane Austen. The one I've got here, for example, is for Mansfield Park. They've each got a beautiful quote in Jane Austen's handwriting matching the picture. They'll be available in A4, the larger one I've got here, but also in A5, the slightly smaller size, which you'll get them like this and you'll have the option to put a passepartout around them or perhaps even to frame them as I've done here. And apart from the art prints, there will be this lovely set of bookmarks with a fun little activity for you to enjoy. Cut out your own bookmarks, Georgian style with a little scissors. There will also be our stunning perpetual birthday calendar. This calendar is Regency illustrated, not specifically Jane Austen only, but general scenes of Georgian life. Starting off in January, lovely cold day, snow. All in that particular style that Lakshmi has chosen, that style so popular in the Georgian era that our heroes and heroines would have made their drawings in if they had enjoyed drawing. These beautiful black silhouettes that give that distinct feel of the Georgian era. Little scene in Bath. Ladies enjoying their tea and cake. And so on and so forth. Little chit chat on the sofa. Now apart from the perpetual birthday calendar, there also will be a year calendar for 2023 with specific Jane Austen illustrations. As there are 12 months and six novels, there'll be two for each novel in that beautiful calendar. I haven't got a copy of that here yet, but we will soon be showing it at the market. But obviously after that, it will also be online. But if you make it to the market, you'll be the first. And last but not least, There'll be beautiful sets of Christmas cards specially designed for the event. So come and see us at our stall. We'll be at the opening fair of the Jane Austen Festival in Bath 
at the Guild Hall in the Banqueting Room. That will be on Saturday the 10th of September from 11.30am until 3.30pm. Can't wait to see you there. Now in case you haven't ever been to the Jane Austen Festival, like myself by the way, or just don't even know about it, let me tell you very briefly. So it's an annual major festival which is all about Jane Austen and there are balls, workshops and all sorts of fascinating events all around Jane Austen, her life and her stories. Now most of the participants will actually dress up in clothing of the era and they'll know how to dance or they will learn in the workshops and they'll put that into practice during the balls. So it must be quite amazing. I have a couple of friends who've been to the Jane Austen Festival loads of times. Now, they're not specifically Janeites so much. They are people who are really into reenactments of all sorts of events of all sorts of eras. But they do particularly like the Regency as well and they do love Jane Austen. So they tend to go there every year and I've already seen pictures and sort of drooled over them thinking I would love to go there someday. And here we are. This year, Lakshmi and I will be there and we'll be meeting them and we'll be making features on that as well. So be prepared for some amazing bath events going on. For now, I'm going to leave you with a delightful preview of the Jane Austen Festival in the form of a slideshow with pictures, courtesy of these friends of mine, Tammy and Fabian. Can't wait to see you in Bath. And in the meantime, I'm going to be reading some passages from Persuasion for you little moments out of that beautiful story that takes place for a great deal in Bath. See you soon. See you in Bath. There had been three alternatives. London, Bath or another house in the country. All Anne's wishes had been for the latter. But the usual fate of Anne attended her in having something very opposite from her inclination fixed on. She disliked Bath and did not think it agreed with her, and Bath was to be her home. Sir Walter had at first thought more of London, but Mr Shepherd felt that he could not be trusted in London and had been skilful enough to dissuade him from it and make Bath preferred. It was a much safer place for a gentleman in his predicament. He might there be important at comparatively little expense. Two material advantages of Bath over London had, of course, been given all their weight. Its more convenient distance from Kellynch, only 50 miles, and Lady Russell's spending some part of every winter there. And to the very great satisfaction of Lady Russell, whose first views on the projected change had been for Bath, Sir Walter and Elizabeth were induced to believe that they should lose neither consequence nor enjoyment by settling there. And with regard to Anne's dislike of Bath, she considered it as a prejudice and mistake arising first from the circumstance of her having been three years at school there after her mother's death, and secondly, from her happening to be not in perfectly good spirits the only winter which she had afterwards spent there with herself. Lady Russell was fond of Bath, in short, and disposed to think it must suit them all. And as Sir Walter proposed removing to Bath in the course of the preceding month, there was no time to be lost in making every dependent arrangement. Lady Russell, convinced that Anne would not be allowed to be of any use or any importance in the choice of the house which they were going to secure, was very unwilling to have her hurried away so soon and wanted to make it possible for her to stay behind till she might convey her to Bath herself after Christmas. Something occurred, however, to give her a different duty. Mary, often a little unwell and always thinking a great deal of her own complaints, and always in the habit of claiming Anne when anything was the matter, was indisposed, and foreseeing that she should not have a day's health all the autumn, entreated, or rather required her, for it was hardly entreaty, to come to Upper Cross Cottage and bear her company as long as she should want her, instead of going to Bath. I cannot possibly do without Anne, was Mary's reasoning. And Elizabeth's reply was, Then I'm sure Anne had better stay, for nobody will want her in Bath. To be claimed as a good, though in an improper style, is at least better than being rejected as no good at all. And Anne, glad to be thought of some use, 
glad to have anything marked out as a duty and certainly not sorry to have the scene of it in the country and her own dear country readily agreed to stay. When Lady Russell, not long afterwards, was entering Bath on a wet afternoon and driving through the long course of streets from the old bridge to Camden Place, amidst the dash of other carriages, the heavy rumble of carts and drays, the bawling of newspaper men, muffin men and milkmen, and the ceaseless clink of patterns, she made no complaint. No, these were noises which belonged to the winter pleasures. Anne did not share these feelings. She persisted in a very determined, though very silent, disinclination for Bath. Caught the first dim view of the extensive buildings, smoking in rain, without any wish of seeing them better. Felt their progress through the streets to be, however disagreeable, yet too rapid, for who would be glad to see her when she arrived? And looked back with fond regret to the bustles of Upper Cross and the seclusion of Kellynch. Upper Cross excited no interest, Kellynch very little. It was all Bath. They had the pleasure of assuring her that Bath more than answered their expectations in every respect. Their house was undoubtedly the best in Camden Place. Their drawing rooms had many decided advantages over all the others which they had either seen or heard of, and the superiority was not less in the style of the fitting up or the taste of the furniture. They had Mr. Elliot too. Anne had a great deal to hear of Mr. Elliot. He was not only pardoned, they were delighted with him. He had been in Bath about a fortnight. The Bath paper one morning announced the arrival of the Dowager Viscountess Dalrymple and her daughter, the Honourable Miss Carteret. She had been at Bath the year before, and Lady Russell had heard her spoken of as a charming woman. It was very desirable that the connection should be renewed if it could be done, without any compromise of propriety on the side of the Elliots. While Admiral Croft was taking his walk with Anne and expressing his wish of getting Captain Wentworth to Bath, Captain Wentworth was already on his way thither. Before Mrs Croft had written, he was arrived, and the very next time Anne walked out, she saw him. Though I came only yesterday, I have equipped myself properly for Bath already, you see pointing to a new umbrella. Another circumstance, very essential for her to know, was how long he meant to be in Bath. He had not mentioned it, or she could not recollect it. He might be only passing through, but it was more probable that he should be come to stay. In that case, so liable as everybody was to meet everybody in Bath, Lady Russell would in all likelihood see him somewhere. A very fine young man indeed said Lady Dorimple. More air than one often sees in Bath. Irish, I dare say. Dare not say that man forgets sooner than woman, that his love has an earlier death. I have loved none but you. Unjust I may have been, weak and resentful I have been, but never inconstant. You alone have brought me to Bath, for you alone I think and plan, Have you not seen this? Here, said he, ended the worst of my state, for now I could at least put myself in the way of happiness. I could exert myself, I could do something, but to be waiting so long in inaction and waiting only for evil had been dreadful. Within the first five minutes I said, I will be at Bath on Wednesday, and I was. Was it unpardonable to think it worth my while to come and to arrive with some degree of hope? You were single. It was possible that you might retain the feelings of the past as I did, and one encouragement happened to be mine. I could never doubt that you would be loved and sought by others, but I knew to a certainty that you had refused one man at least, of better pretensions than myself, and I could not help often saying, Was this for me? Get your free coach ticket now. Sign up below and hop on board the Georgian Sisters Express.